This is the fifth and final part of my series of videos showing how I made the how I'm making the carriage sheds for the Liverpool Overhead Railway, which were um, at Herculaneum Dock Station. Uh, in, at the second Herculaneum Dock Station, these they actually comprised the uh, the position of but not I don't think the structures of the original Herculaneum station dock station which was at the southern end of the Liverpool overhead railway in its original form and it was later extended to Dingle by driving a tunnel through the um, through the high ground to the east and south of Herculaneum Dock and also it was extended it was extended northwards from Seaforth round to Seaforth and Litherland and that involved building a new station at Seaforth Sands on a reverse S curve around the original station which then became additional carriage sidings. This is two carriage sidings and uh, this is this forms two carriage sidings and numbered which is one and two and the the ones at C4 Sands became three, four, five, six, seven, I think it was I think that's right. Anyway considerably larger number. Okay so going back to this making the model in GMAX what I've just done there is I've reduced the <coughs> side of the viaduct girder, the viaduct girder side from 200 feet down to 100 feet. These are two 100 foot sections and now I'm just going to sort out the texture on the side which should line up. You can see at the moment it doesn't, there's far too many of them. It's got to line up with these verticals so at the moment it's 54.5 and that was 270 um, so I want to keep the 0.5 um, well I'm going to guess I'm going to start off with 20 my goodness what a guess look at that perfect <laughs> and um, so that's good I'm going to keep that I'm, the other thing I need to do is to just alter I'm just looking here because here is the side of the those curious semicircular uh, track bed and in fact what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, delete one of those just in a moment as a marker I want to reduce the length of this is the horizontal section beneath the uh, upright girder and it's uh, at minus 100 feet I'm going to move it to zero and again 54 I can move that down to 20 that corrects the texture on that and then I believe there's an upper one to help with this I'm just going to hide some elements so I can see what I'm doing there it is and just reduce this down I'm hoping that these videos are of help for anybody who's working in GMAX making scenery items because although I'm not giving too much information about what I'm actually doing while I'm doing it you can see if it, I'm demonstrating what I'm doing so you can pick up tips and tricks and ideas from the way I'm doing this now the other thing I'm going to do here is uh, for this second one because I do have far too many poly polygon count is really quite high so I'm going to um, change this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to simply delete each of these um, pieces of the track bed. Let's have a look, polygon counter. Yeah, 36. So 
let's lose those to begin with I'm going to replace it with a simple flat rectangular uh, track bed because it's hidden away by and large there is uh, an example of that sort of flat uh, track bed and that's at the junction very close just just actually where these uh, lines feed into okay I'm also going to hide this see what else I can hide I know what I've got to do and these pieces here they're now superfluous that piece there is now superfluous what I'm going to do is let's just come back here I'm going to hide quite a bit more hide that roof there's a little bit of fiddling about just to finish these but it's um, mostly there and what I can do here is uh, although I'm gonna be they are they are going to be present I'm deleting these pieces these are the inner and outer formers or strengthening parts of the girders here and just by deleting those I'm going to bring them back but I'm going to be bringing them back moved out a bit but by taking away those sun there isn't there one there and, oops, and another one there it is and there and there so I'm hoping that this is proving of interest and that it is not like watching paint dry and uh, it does give you some ideas about what's involved even in producing models for um, trains let's just have a look at that so it's this one over here I'm going to take out that and there's the bottom one there and my next step is to hide the track bed there. and basically what I want to do is to oops that was wrong is to pick up I think I've got everything there group that okay and make sure <coughs> excuse me that it's centered then we're going to clone that and move it over and also I need to rotate it there we are. and that gives me my two pieces there and they are positioned I think correctly yeah well it should be 50 feet but it's allowing for the, the minor variations that there are and then I pick this one up again copy it move it over okay let's have a look get it into its exact position And put a minus there and do this and then just simply I could either clone it or clone this one oops <laughs> and just get this one directly back into position let's just zoom in a bit okay and also give that a minus and what that should have done I hope is moved it down yes there we are put it down in the position one other thing to do now is to want the other piece to do and it's now at the correct width and I've got to close it off and also put two short uh, connecting pieces in so to do that to close it off on top down view and let's clone this and rotate it and then 
move it on the x-axis so that it's in the correct position there we are and then grab the y-axis move it down and I think into where do we get to we get to there so into that that girder there I'm allowing some overlap I'm not going to worry too much about that it's not going to be a big issue I don't think let's have a look okay yes we can get away with that quite nicely so I'm going to ungroup that and reduce this to it's going to go to let's just try that I think it should go to uh, 22 feet do, 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 do. And twenty two there. And similarly with these two horizontal girders or horizontal plates. Not too worried about the joints, um to be honest, once we've got this all put together. The overall effect I think will be quite okay. So there we are, 22. And here. So I'm making this in real time. This is as everything you've seen on these um, videos. I've not done any other work to it at any other time. It's simply just what's covered by these videos, nothing else. Just to give you an idea of both the length of time that this sort of a model can take, but also how relatively straightforward the whole thing is. So let's see if we can get that texture lined up. It was down to 20. And what I want to do is come in and line up. So we come down to 44 from 50 although I think actually it's yeah. I'm just guessing because it's an odd, odd length I've got left here Um, actually I don't want to have any one face selected let's just have a look here so those bits are the sort of odds and ends of of the girder I'm just going to bring that back to zero and then it's too many so now my aim is just to nudge it and I'm just going to be guessing 10 so let's try 9 I'm just doing this by eye. It needs to be a tad longer. Or is it a tad less? A tad longer. 
hand at the same time. Moved laterally. So if I get one done, there we are. And then it's repeating too frequently, so 8.9 for 3.4, let's try 8.9. going the wrong direction. <laughs> Let's just try moving it fraction of the wrong way. Okay. Ah, I suppose the good thing is of course once I get it done it's done. <laughs> But it uh, can be a bit. Textures, you need to take your time with them because it, it just makes makes them look so much better if you get them. These these sort of fiddly details, they they look like they're unnecessary. But I can assure you, they're not because they do really add to the overall model and. those out. I seem to be making a mess of this. We've got basically one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, but it's nine. Hmm. I think what I need to do is start at zero here and one here and then pick those up. So from the center, the center line here, I'm now going to spread the texture out each side until it fits. And I need to come in reasonably close. This may look complicated, but it's not when you start thinking about it. And uh, it does begin to make some sort of sense. At least I hope it does. I think we're beginning to get there. Yes, we're going in the right direction. Oops. Let's come back a tad. I think we're there. Let's have a get in, have a quick look. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. There we are. So just out of curiosity, what was that? Minus 3926. 4922 minus 39. I'm not a clue why those aren't the same. Oh well, anyway, it works. Why argue? Okay, so that's that bit done. And so we close that end off. And then the only other thing I've got to do now is to <coughs> make two pieces across there and the base, the track base. So I'm going to pick up another one of these. Oh no, not again, you say. <laughs> Never mind. Let's survive. Let's go up there. Now I'm only going to make on one side and then clone it, of course, and put it on the other side. So my first step is to get the position just about where I had it before, which is that center piece. That's that centre pair there. That's the girder. So basically I want to be I think I want to be there. Let's go in, have a good look. Close up there, that will be it. And then let's have a look, see if I can possibly just get a single either a single cross piece or pair. Yeah, that doesn't look too bad if I come to there. Oops. Let's just move that into position. Uh, and then ungroup it. Pick 
cut my pick up my central girder and bring it in this part of the Liverpool overhead railway is really we're finding it very challenging um, several of the pieces that we're having to make the, the both the particularly on the route Bob is having Bob the route builder is having all sorts of complications with the problem that we found is that the that the uh, layout at Herculaneum and in particular I'm going to leave that one there and in particular the from the junction across the bridge into the tunnel portal for the tunnel that takes goes as far as Dingle uh, means that it has to penetrate a substantial cliff which is which looms above Her Herculaneum dock and um, it's a strange thing about that it's uh, the name Herculaneum Dock, presumably the name was given for some reason to because of the uh, of Herculaneum in Italy near Naples though I've yet to come across anything which explains why it's called that so any information you can give we've looked in the books uh, I've got now I've got I think everything that um, has been written, every separate book that's been done about the Liverpool overhead. That's a very s slim collection, a very short, small library. I think it's four books altogether. Um, and uh, so between us, Bob and I have really tried to examine everything that relates to uh, the Liverpool overhead railway and um, I've yet to come across anything I'm just going to fix the our oh, good old friends the the um, texture on this in fact what I'm going to do is I'm going to do what I did before which seems now like a good trick take that to zero come out put that to one as I say, you can see there's other faces on the, those girders uh, and I just use the centre of the girder to uh, colour them in give them the texture of that red oxide which is such a characteristic of the Liverpool overhead viaduct and just about everything else OK, so I'm going to give it a go now with the stretching it out and let's just move it as well where are we it's just a little bit yeah so if, if anybody knows why it's called it's the other way, isn't it? why it's called Herculaneum is it named after I can only imagine it's named after the archaeological remains discovered in near Naples, the town of Herculaneum and one thing that struck me about the cliff at Herculaneum dock because there's a, a cliff that rises at the back of the dock which is where the Dingle Tunnel portal uh, is, bay, is, is located and it's giving us all sorts of fun and games getting it that's us getting it um, modelled and um, because partly because of the nature of uh, the terrain grid in trains there we are, I think that's going to do it and um, so the when you look at the cliff 
it looked to me, it looks very like when you're in Herculaneum, which I visited and thoroughly enjoyed, and highly recommend it. And when you're in Herculaneum and you uh, are in the remains and you look up, it's, it's, it's almost in a basin and it, it it's you you go down it's it's well below the level of the modern town which is all around it of course and um and actually of course it's well below because it was covered by lava by no not lava by pumice from um from the volcano from vesuvius oops a bit too much there 180 we want 180 there we are So when you look up, when you visit Herculaneum, you go, you do actually walk down into it. It's like a great open air rectangular amphitheatre with the remains of about a quarter of the old historic uh, site of Herculaneum. There we are. Oh, okay, maybe a few gaps. So I've just got to do the bit underneath now. So I'll just take the roof off for that, I'll hide the roof. And looking down on it, how many polys are we up to again? 9104, I think we'll be alright. I'm going to have a go at exporting this into trains, which I'll do very shortly. Draw a box there and make it a uh, yay deep. The technical term. Okay, um, I'm not too worried about keeping it as a box, I want it as a poly because I'm going to alter this now. First of all, I'm going to get the width. When you stand in the remains of Herculaneum. It's very similar to looking up at the side of the cliff when you're in Herculaneum Dock. And the depth, it's, it's 20 meters from the level of the dock up to the street, which is running along the top of the cliff above the tunnel to Dingle and 20 meters is about i think the height the depth rather that you descend in order to get into the remains of the uh, of, of uh, the remains of herculaneum itself so it's quite remarkable. So whether uh, somebody who was whoever was naming the dock, and it's the dock itself, of course, which gives the location its name. Um, whether it's somebody who, when they were building the dock, you know, just visited Herculaneum and was struck by the similarity of the location, the look of the location with the location of uh, with Herculaneum itself. I don't know. I'd like to know. Uh, because I'm just curious about things like that. I I can just leave that there. I think I'm alright. Let's have a look over here. Yep. I think so. Let's have a quick look. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to colour that in. It, I should say, it's more accurate, isn't it? Um, via that texture, and it's that one down there. Just 
cover the whole thing in that. There we are. And because it's going to be in a shed, uh, I've done loco sheds and um, carriage sheds. I don't know. I think, yeah, I've done some carriage sheds. And the detail you put inside can be fairly minimal. Unless you want to really get into um, really get into I'm gonna leave that face there because that's gonna lead on for the track. But I can delete three faces, I can save the three polys. Let's have a look. I think that's it. Now I'm going to make this, I'm exporting this as a scenery item. Uh, so let's save that. File, save as, carriage sheds, then carriage sheds 2.1 will be the copy. There we are. But before I do anything like that, having saved it all, my next step is to take all those groups and ungroup everything. Sometimes you have to do it three times because you've got groups within groups within groups. Okay. Now, um, this is where the fun begins because this is how you can easily crash GMAX, I discovered. Pick up some of them. Well, first of all, pick up all of them. Select all. Reset X form. Reset the lot. Make sure <coughs> the all the pivots point the same way. And now this is where I'm saying about crashing. <laughs> um, pick up some of them. Not all at one go. Right click. Convert to editable poly. And you'll see the arrow there has some, some little like um, sheets of paper. Just wait for it to do the job. There we are. Just be patient with it. Patient with it. As you can see, I'm slowly working my way across the model. Just doing this. This is when it often crashes, I found. Especially if you did try to do that a lot in one go. Which is why I do it like this. If you want a bit of entertainment while you're doing this, check the poly count. 9107, just on the off chance that it's going to actually reduce, that you've missed something, missed converting something to polys, and it's going to convert them down for you. Hasn't shifted yet. I think I've been pretty good in converting to polys as I go. When you're making a locomotive, this is particularly important because you can leave stuff um, as splines or as extrusions, and it really does whack up the poly count. And <coughs> often you then have to export your locomotive. <coughs> excuse me, not just in the um, uh, main part of the mesh, the frames and the boiler and firebox and cab etc smoke pots um, but also of course you export the bogey separately but also um, I found for example with when I did the rover class the broad gauge rover class uh, even though it wasn't particularly detailed I had to export a section of that as a separate model because trains just couldn't handle it Well, I don't think I'm going to be losing any polys by the look of it. Not saving any. I think I think I'm stuck with nine one oh seven. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to save that again, just to make sure 
and now I'm going to go into my list of models scenery here we are we're already there I'm just going to add one there you can see how I just how I always yeah, I use uh, Excel L O R Herculaneum carry shed and then <coughs> this is my 169585 five, oops not 5858 five, eight, 40119 so this is the next one down <coughs> I'm just making note of that on a scrap pad next to me here so I know what I'm doing uh, that, that ju I just keep that models list for my own reference and now um, into um, file editor uh, where do we want to go trains projects tame this is going to be a tame model it's going to be a scenery model let's have a look down here LOR no, it's, that's what you want SF try to give so we want a new folder. So S F L O R Herculaneum Carriage Shed. <clears throat> and because it's just another plain scenery item, just like Herculaneum Bridge above it, I tend to do this. Can get you into all sorts of silly ways if you're not careful but um, I'll keep it called track via that texture well we'll see in a minute but the first thing to do is go into the um, I've copied the config so the first thing I want to do is make sure I've got this, the KUID right LOI Herculaneum carriage shed and this is a simple scenery config I call it track, I'm going to leave it at that, That's no problem. Herculaneum dock bridge, Herculaneum dock carriage shed. Uh, all the rest I can leave, plus or, plus or minus 100 height range, that's all my usual guff. Uh, I've got the wrong contact website there, but I'm not too worried about that. Uh, save, there we are. Uh, and I just go into here and file export and then I just navigate to where I was just working SFLOR Herculaneum carriage shed there it is I'm going to call it track it doesn't matter that's it exporting it's probably quite a big file yeah, that's not going to load into into trains one go, I don't think. I think I'm going to have to split that. The GMW file is unnecessary, you can delete that. Uh, the trains plugin for GMAX generates it, but it's, it's unnecessary, you don't need to worry. So we've got some some textures to make sure we've got the textures in. I could have used the texture exporter to export the, the, the correct textures but um, I don't always remember to use the right location so I tend to just copy the textures I need glass now it's just the TGA file so we need the bitmap file as well for the glass where are we up here glass 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 so copy both of those and paste them over here. I do this this way, but I know there's you know more slick ways of doing it. Getting it to do it automatically. But this way I feel I've got more control. Station texture two. Copy paste. Vertical planks. Viaduct texture we've already got. Viaduct Texture 2. Hmm, interesting. Viaduct Texture 2. Well, just looking there, I don't think we need Viaduct Texture 2. 
because that's 18th of July and this is the 2nd of August so I can delete that one and I just want that fired up texture and we want vertical planks okay so we've got we've got one two three four five textures one two three four five and because of the glass we've got the bitmap there screenshot is wrong doesn't matter um, but we're ready to have a go putting it into trains so this is where it begins to go all sorts of wrong so let's open up our content manager and I was just it's my own content and it's just going to be a scenery item a building so on SF L O R and where's the Hercula Herculaneum dock that's the that's the station sign Herculaneum bridge so it should appear somewhere there import content folder because it's the folder that we're going to be using not um, not a CDP file I'm not importing a CDP file I'm importing a, a folder from my own Herculaneum carriage shed here we go this will probably blow its brains oh look at that my goodness failed to load via that texture oh, oh yeah perhaps we needed it after all um, but it's there modify it Let's have a look at all the errors. I, yeah, you see, I've got high meshes have a negative impact. Oops, so let's open it up. Show in Explorer. Where are you? There we are. Oh. <laughs> Deleted the wrong by that texture. That was stupid. Uh, where are we? Must have a third one somewhere. Uh, so we want by that texture. It's that one that we want, and that one we don't want. And I'll also put it in the one where I'm right, so I don't want to that one I did a second version for the uh, the Herculaneum bridge slightly darker okay so I think I can where are we? that's the one which is open in the editing so let's have a go at that. Oh well, claims it's okay. I don't think it will display properly. It's too big. 2.9 meg is too big. I should get a preview, which is the screenshot file, which is Herculaneum Bridge. But let's just open up trains. And let's create a route. And I suspect I'm going to see something rather strange here. I don't think it's going to appear over here. It should be under SF. SF. L O R. L O R. Herculaneum. Oh, it is. Carriage shed. I don't think it will display properly. Well, that's moved, proved me a liar. So we'll have a look inside it in a minute. That's oh, fine. Goodness me. How very strange. You just couldn't predict it. Now, I've, it's just as a scenery item, so it's not going to uh, snap to anything. So my next job, really, is to put a five-foot piece of fixed track and let's go on the top just 
we'll take around a little bit. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Control here. Okay, it's close enough. Let's go in. And we just move that into position. I I and then we can pick up our SFLO R. I've made far too many of these, haven't I? Five foot, that's the repeater, I think. And click that into the middle. And I think I put out five meters is the correct height, just as a rough. And then just straighten it up a bit. I don't think this has got any uprights on it. No, it needs to be. It needs to have uprights. But there we are. You can see that I've got the beginning of the for the carriage shed. If I just put another one of these in, move it into position there. Let's have a look down on it. And I'll just pick up that spline. I'll attempt to anyway. There we are. And just there we are, connect it up. <coughs> and now I could start playing track. And the track would just be laid at the correct height for the carriage shed. But I think actually, I think that's good. I think that's good. I'm amazed. I um, really thought I would have some problem with it displaying all the detail and um, there's not too many sort of odd gaps and shapes but it's a pretty straightforward model well there we are I did not think I would be able to conclude this um, fifth and final uh, video with a correctly displayed carriage shed in trains and I think that's that's done the job so there we are that's how I've made the carriage shed and the next thing is is that Bob the Bob the route builder is going to be putting it into position and this will be an easy job for him unlike the <coughs> the bit over the bridge and into the cliff which we're still wrangling over still trying to sort out twist it into into submission and um, we can run a couple of tracks into this and uh, at this end on the left hand end it will be the junction piece it will provide the access into the current shed so that's the end of this video um, hope it's been of some use hope you've enjoyed it and uh, if you have any questions queries or comments please do pay, post them um, please uh, uh, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so and look out for more models for the liverpool overhead railway project